And once again, it is Monday, or whatever time you're watching this, and time for voiceover, body shop, or VO, BD and Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. The, the, I get a little claustrophobic in places like this. Hey, tonight our guest is the one and only Eric Shepard. There he We're, is. He's right Wait, down he's there. Right over there. Yeah, there, hey, there he is. Hey, Eric. Good to see you, man. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk with him. He is an agent, and we're going to talk about the in intense, weird state of our business. <laughs> Intensely weird. Yes. And Eric, of and course, will help us. we think of a us. better guest. For that, that, it's perfectly natural to have him on tonight. <laughs> and, so, and if you've got a question for him, throw it in our chat room, whether it's in Facebook or on our website. This and is a good opportunity. If you want to ask an agent a question... And yeah. don't ask him where do I send my demo. <laughs> Bad question. It will be a, that would be an unacceptable question for tonight. So stay tuned. Eric Shepard's our guest. We'll be right here, right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Good to see you. You too, man. We get to see each other like twice a month now. Yep, half as much, but twice the quality. That's right. We put <laughs> far more into it. And uh, we've got a great guest tonight. Uh, Eric Shepard will be joining us in just a second. Yep. And uh, again, if you've got a question for anybody, <laughs> George, me, Eric, especially Eric, especially Eric, throw it in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook or you are on our website mm -hmm. or wherever you're watching this. We want to yeah. we want to broadcast everywhere. Yeah. Mike's Mike's watching both chat rooms tonight. So uh, wherever you're watching it, we'll get your questions. That's right. So why don't we bring in our guest since he's the most important one here tonight? Uh, with over 25 years of industry experience, internationally recognized voiceover expert, Eric Shepard is the owner and head agent of the Shepard Agency, formerly known as Voice Talent Productions, a premier talent agency representing an elite roster of union and non-union voice talent, like me, from around the globe. Uh, starting with his first voiceover gig at the age of 17, he's worked in the industry as a talent and coach and now oversees an agency booking thousands of high-profile projects per year. He's also a founding member and president of the VoiceOver Agent Alliance, an organization fighting for the fairness and ethics in the voiceover industry. His career, classes, appearances, and related projects have been profiled on the Learning Channel and countless industry blogs, podcasts, publications, and social media outlets. And his YouTube channel, The Outspoken. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if it's happening in the world of voiceover, chances are... Eric is involved. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Eric Shepard. More than muted applause. <laughs> it's good to have you on the show. Thanks me, for joining us tonight. Turn on his mic, then we can even it's hear good him. To be here, looming behind you. <laughs> Please, that's what's going on. 
<laughs> well, it's great to see you. I mean, you, you creep me right out, man. It's... Good God. <laughs> <laughs> All the things you don't want to see when you turn around. That's, well, that's not that bad. I've, I've seen worse. <laughs> but Aging agent. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, but it's been fun watching your pictures, you know, as your career has developed, you know, as your hair gets grayer and your beard gets grayer yeah. and stuff like well, that. Well, you know, I have a, uh, I got a teenager and a toddler. So as this is this is the end result. Yeah, what happens? And they are great markers of time as well. So you you've yeah. been in the voiceover business as we were saying for over twenty five years. Yeah, forever, man. Uh, that's not quite forever. Give it a oh, few no. years, All right? Yeah. Uh, but but you've been doing all sorts of voiceover work, uh, and you've probably covered all sorts of genres. Uh, how did you become an agent? Uh, I honestly, I re- I kind of fell ass backwards into that one. Um, I've told this story before, but basically I was a talent. Uh, and then I knew a bunch of other talent cause I was you know, talking and hanging out with talent cause like, nobody else can handle us, uh, or, you know, wants to hang out with us. And, um, so I'd have clients that were saying, you know, Hey, you know, we love you and whatever. Uh, but we're looking for something different or do you know a female or, uh, you know, we want Spanish for this next thing. Can you hook us up or is it? Yeah. You know, of course. Uh, you know, I know this talent and that talent, and then more clients were asking me and then I'd get a contact and it, Hey, you know, the, you hooked up these guys and then we spoke with them and they said, you're the one to talk to. And, um, and then finally a buddy of mine was just like, dude, you're an agent. Like this is like, you have to, that's your thing, man. Like, you know, the universe is just kind of handing this to you. Um, so it was really just a matter of, uh, you know, kind of out of nowhere. Uh, I had the clients and I had the talent and, uh, it was just a matter of putting, you know, one and one together and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. Now, you've you've got a large roster of clients. I think everybody I know is on your roster, including me. So it's kind of fun well, to Well, you know, it's, uh, there's no shortage of people looking for representation. We only have a few hundred. I could have 5,000 tomorrow. Um, you know, our inbox is just blowing up constantly with people that are looking uh, for an agent. But, you know, I want to know the folks. So, uh, you know, and I want it to be small enough that I kind of have an idea what they can do and what they can't do. And, um, you know, keep it somewhat uh, manageable. So, um, you know, there are agents out there and they do really well and they have like 25 folks. So that's not the way we do it. Um, But, you know, there's agents out there that have thousands and I don't know how they handle it. That's, you know, that's not for me. You know, again, I want to kind of know everybody and be able to say hi and that kind of thing. So um, we, I think we found a kind of a happy medium. Plus I just hate taking on new talent. It's like a pain in the butt, man. He had a, I'm sure. Like, well, yeah, you know, you got to like know them and make sure they're not crazy. And um, you know, it's a project. So um, yeah. So then we're, we're, we're in the middle, I guess. Yeah. So how is your business model as an agency different from say some of the other agencies? I mean, you've, you've got a lot of clients, you've got uh, uh you know, clearly you have, you know, contacts in the business, you know, producers and people that you work with specifically, but you're, you're not like a big Hollywood agency that is like working. You're trying to get that kind of work too, but as an independent agent, you're, you do things just a little bit differently, right? Uh, yeah, probably, you know, we were, uh, we were in New York for quite a while. That's where we originated. So, uh, we were playing kind of with the big boys but we've never really been kind of tied to where we are. You know, now we're down in Austin, Texas. Um, we just, I've never really kind of focused on the local stuff uh, that much. So there is stuff, of course, that is always New York only. And there's stuff that you got to be in LA. So we make sure that we have our, you know, our rosters there uh, and our, uh, our clients there as well, um, you know, on the coast, but otherwise it's, you know, as far as where we're located is not really a concern for us. We're not concerned with, um, you know, keeping talent exclusive with us or any of that kind of stuff. Um, But hopefully what sets us apart uh, from some agents now is that we do turn down a lot of stuff, uh, which is tough to do. But, um, you know, sadly, there's some agents that are kind of defining themselves as saying, you know, hey, we'll take anything. Um, And we don't, you know, we like to, uh, of course you have to make the client happy. Um, but I, I firmly believe that an agent's duty is also to protect their talent. You know, they're, they're trusting you to speak for them. Um, so you got to say the right thing for them for Christ's sake. So, 
uh, we do turn stuff down, unfortunately. And, um, you know, sometimes we have to do it uh, more than we'd like to. But, you know, hopefully the projects that do come through are, are quality projects uh, for talent and for the clients. Place is falling apart. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Why somebody just falling? dropped their water bottle. We won't say who. <laughs> the audio guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, when you're talking to potential clients, they contact you, but you're also trying to seek work for your, you know, your your uh, your talent as well. How do you? How does that process work for you? Anyway. Well, yeah. You know, you can't just kind of hang around. Um, yeah, the complacency is dangerous, and that's happened before. You know, you get to a point, you go, oh, I'm rich. So screw it. Like, you know, everything's good. Uh, but things change so quickly in this business, you know, and that's a really a great uh, lesson for talent as well, because I know a lot of talent that have been that way. It's hey, everything's great. And uh, or my favorite, you know, a couple of years ago, I only work a couple hours a day and then I'm done and you don't bother me after noon because I go and I, you know, I, I party and whatever, you know, and then the bottom fell out and then they're like, Oh man, I wish I had, uh, you know, more eggs, more baskets. Um, so you can't be complacent, you know, of course, do everything that you can to make the clients that you have now happy, but don't, uh, don't expect them to always be there. You know, it could be a day where you're sick and you don't get back to them and that's it, man. You know, they call somebody else because they need something done that day. And now they love that other talent. So they, you know, they work with them all the time. Um, so yeah, you know, we're always actively seeking and we're talking to uh, other producers and other uh, ad agencies because you know, we have to, um, but being an agent in that respect is not really that different from being a talent. You know, you're dealing with clients, clients that you have, uh, trying to get other clients, you're setting up projects, you're delivering audio, uh, you're doing auditions all day. And sometimes you get them and sometimes you don't, and if you don't get them, you don't get paid. So, um, you know, in, in a lot of ways it's very similar. So it wasn't too strange uh, of a transition for, you know, for me to go from one to the other. Relating to what you're saying about, you know, folks that put all their eggs in one basket, how many eggs and how many baskets? So like, let's say, <laughs> you know, should you, if you have one client that provides more than 40% of your income, does that mean you need to start diversifying? Do you, yeah. do you ever uh, think of it you know, in numbers it, like that, like a numbers game like that or? To me, it's always been, uh, you know, I, ha I never really quantified it, uh, but I've never been asked such a question before. Good. <laughs> Kudos. Um, I, I've always kind of seen it as if you're, you know, kind of looking at the books or whatever and you go, oh, man, if I lost those guys, I'd be, you know, I'm screwed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, now you're in trouble. You know, we all have kind of big fish. Um, but, yeah, if you've got one or two or three, you know, you got to reach out, man, you need more because chances are they are going to disappear. You know, that's what I, the campaign ends, you know, people leave, especially producers and uh, ad yeah. folks, they're jumping all over all the time, you know, so you have this one and they love you and whatever, but now they go somewhere else and somewhere else only uses this other agency because they have for 25 years and now they're not, you know, they're not going to book you. Um, oh, so yeah, if you're, you know, that you've got that so one thing, often. especially, I mean, if it's not a person or a company, but it's a, it's a campaign, you go, oh, I've been voicing for so-and-so for 20 years. Well, dude, they, it's amazing. They didn't get rid of you 10 years ago, you know? So, um, be prepared all the time, not to, uh, you know, be like the sky's falling, but yeah, there's, there's no room for complacency, especially now because of the newer clients that are coming in, you know, they don't want to pay. Um, quite often. So it's difficult, you know, you're doing the same work, maybe you were doing 10 years ago, but uh, you have to do twice as much of it just to, you know, to, to be where you were. So uh, you got to be vigilant all the time. Right. Now, as an agent, as you were just saying that, you know, they don't want to pay, uh, you know, rates have been, been declining and you've been com commenting on this a lot on your, on your, uh, your, your own YouTube channel and various other places. Um, why do you think that is? And how are you as an agent trying to combat that aside from saying my guy's worth a lot more than that? Uh, you know, as far as how it happened, when it happened, it, there's a lot of factors um, to, to kind of encapsulate it. The major problem is there's just too many damn talent. You know, there's too many folks you know, a million years ago, uh, you know, when you told somebody you were in voiceover, they were amazed. They were shocked that that was even a thing. 
you know, and now it's everybody and their brother is, uh, you know, somehow involved in voiceover or they tried it or uh, it seems like the new hotness now is, uh, uh, what are they, uh, realty, uh, you know, selling houses and stuff. And it's like, ah, oh, everybody, does, oh, I do it and I do it and, and that one yeah. does it and whatever. Um, so you had a lot of failed talent and then they all became coaches and then they <laughs> sold the dream to everybody else. Yeah, you, know, you can make a million dollars and look, I have done it. Why are you coaching? Never mind. Uh, yeah, I make a million dollars every day and I'm going to teach you how to do it too. And everybody said, well, I've got a nice voice, et cetera. Uh, or they said, well, your voice doesn't matter even better because my voice is terrible. Um, but anyway, you know, it's just too many people doing it. And then they were kind of fighting for each other. And then you had the pay to plays, which rewarded, uh, whoever was going to give the lowest bid. And it just kind of, you know, there was no, there's no barrier to entry. And then you got a lot of folks that are just, um, you know, they're hobbyists, man. So they don't care if it pays 50 bucks. It's beer money. You know, it's, this is not going to make or break them. That They're not paying their mortgage or feeding their kids with this money. So, uh, you know, things went down. And once they start going down, then it was like Christmas, man, you know, for the buyers. Is they, Are you kidding me? Like just two years ago, I was paying 10 grand and now I could do it for, you know, get this for 500 bucks. Uh, yeah. All right. Great. Um, so people just started accepting it. And then they were, some folks were accepting it more at, they were like kind of panicked and said, well, I guess this is the new rate all of a sudden. So I better take as many of these jobs that are, you know, paying terribly as I can. And there was no pushback. And you had some folks like me screaming, you know, the sky's falling. And, um, uh, you know, sadly, uh, not too many people or not enough people fought back. And here we are. Yeah. Who's going to be the next voice actor that markets themselves as, my voice is awful. But I've got a great read. I'm, wor something. I'm working on it. <laughs> 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 Somebody's got to pull out. I sound terrible. I, I sound like I just coughed up a hairball while I was drinking all night. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 definitely an interesting business. And if you're if you're joining us live right now and you're wondering who are we talking to, it's my agent and a lot of people's agent, but a great guy, Eric Shepard, uh, who is uh, talking to us about. Nose. What's that? Oh, you guys oh, are picking my nose man, back then. It's yeah. one of our favorite things to do here when we do this. Uh, it's all about the IG screen, screen grabs. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, if you actually find something in there, we really got a problem. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you got a question for Eric about agents and what they do or about the state of the industry that we're not covering, we're going to try. Throw it in the chat room right now, and uh, Mike is in the chat room tonight, and he will relay those questions to us in the next segment. So uh, make sure, here's your chance. How often do we get an agent on? Now's a good chance to ask. But again, don't ask, where do I send my demo? Um, I mean, unless you want them to. No, oh, God, no. <laughs> okay, no, good. No, I don't <laughs> good, want I Good don't to want know. Demo. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, you were one of the founders of the, the VoiceOver Agents Association. Is that what we call it? The VOA? Alliance. 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 VoiceOver Agent Alliance. Tell us what brought that about and what it took to bring about and what it's about. Uh, well, you know, I was just kind of a loud mouth about some of this stuff. Yeah, we know uh, that. You know, we saw what was, uh, yeah, well, it comes with the territory, you know. Once, you, once you're a voice actor, you just talk too much. Um, but I found some kindred spirits, uh, you know, some other agents that felt the same way. And, you know, they saw the writing on the wall and said, uh, we got problems here, man. You know, we got to talk about this. And we should kind of, you know, band together here, which was really unheard of. Uh, agents notoriously play their cards real close uh, to their chest. You know, they don't really for the most part, you know, kind of work with other agents or hang out with other agents or, uh, you know, share stories or secrets or that kind of thing. Um, so it was fairly unprecedented, at least for me. Uh, it was and you know, everybody else involved, uh, you know, kind of felt the same way. So we got together and, uh, you know, really just try to hone the message because there's not a lot of other uh, guard dogs on duty, sadly. You know, there's nobody that's really looking out for the industry, that's looking out for the talent, that's looking out even for the other agents, you know. So um, we are, you know, we're trying to be vocal and say, you know, listen, we're the ones that know what's going on. We're the ones that see what's happening. We're in the trenches every day. Um, and this is what needs to be done to combat the problems that we're faced with. So that's, um, 
you know, that's that's why we're here. Yeah. How are you? What exactly are you doing uh, as 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 an, an alliance? I mean, like you were saying, you sort of hold your cards close to the vest. How is it that you're working together to to improve the situation out there? Uh, you know, it starts a lot of time. You have to pick your battles, you know. Um, so it's really kind of making policy that we feel is the only sane policy. Uh, and then sharing that we share that with other members. We, uh, it, all, all members are, uh, are held to a kind of a, a higher standard, uh, than folks who are non-members. Uh, and then there's a lot of outreach. We're always trying to reach out to talent. We've been pretty successful that way, uh, on social media and then reaching out to other agents and saying, you know, Hey, listen, we spent a lot of time talking about this stuff and, uh, we kind of know what the deal is and this is what's happening. And this is the, the type of cooperation we're looking for, um, you know, to help us make some change here before we're all out of our phony baloney jobs. Uh, and then reaching the clients as well. Uh, you know, it's kind of a three prong approach and, you know, educating them and you know, really, you know, sometimes laying down the law or explaining things to them and saying, uh, you know, these are, uh, this is the way things are going. You know, these are the issues that we're faced with uh, and trying to work with them so that everybody's happy, you know, so that the clients, are, the talent are working, the clients are finding them, the, uh, the agents are able to do their thing. Um, just recently, they're uh, saying you got to kind of pick your battles. Um, the latest battle, we just put out a, a press release on Friday. It's probably not the right time to do it, but folks were in Atlanta and stuff. We said, ah, maybe everybody else start. Sorry, I'm like, I, I got an itch. Uh, maybe pe people, will, you know, start chatting about it there if we, uh, if we put it out. We noticed, uh, and it's been going on for a while now, but finally it's, it, we just had enough. Uh, there's clients that are putting in, we were talking about this a little bit before, this real innocuous ask um, where they'll have you kind of traditional terms for the project that you're used to. And then they'll say uh, includes edits or unlimited lifts or all edits, lifts, and versions. And this verbiage is that exact verbiage, all lifts, edits, and versions or cuts and versions. Uh, we're seeing more and more. You're seeing it pop up on auditions. Um, and I think now they're going to start pulling that from the audition, but it's going to wind up, that verbiage is going to wind up in the contract. And for a lot of folks, they don't know what that means. Um, and again, we're agents. We read contracts all day. Um, so when you look at it, you say, wait a minute, what exactly does this mean? What it means is they want to take the audio uh, from the session that you do, and then they're able to make as, any, as many versions as they want out of that, or lifts, uh, or cuts. You know, again, it's all really kind of semantics, but it means the same thing, that the audio, they pay you, uh, in the commercial world anyway, they, they would pay you for a spot, and then they could take the audio from that session and make as many spots as they wish. So traditionally, and for, you know, since the microphone, uh, talent are paid per spot. That's how it works. That's how it works in the union world. And that's how it's worked in the non-union world. Um, but the rates have been lower. And so they've been enjoying that. And this all cuts versions thing uh, is too far. It's going too far. There's only one real reason why they would ask for that. And that is to, again, create multiple spots out of the audio from one spot. So sometimes maybe they'll ask for an alt uh, or they'll say, oh, can we try it this way as well? Um, but again, the end result is the same if that verbiage is in there. And you could fight back and say, I, you know, I, I, I don't agree to this clause. They say, well, we're not going to use it. Well, then take it out of the contract. They take it out of the contract, you, know, you, yeah. you can't sign that contract. Talent will sign stuff which is why we don't let our talent sign contracts. You know that if a contract comes along and we've ever sent you in studio, we always say, don't sign a damn thing. You have them sent, you know, send it here because again, we read these things all day. Talent are um, nice. You know, they don't want to piss anybody. They don't want to say, well, I don't like this and I don't like that. But lean on us, man. We'll be the heavy. That's our job, you know? And I, they'll say, well, I don't know about this. It's boilerplate. Don't worry about it. Okay. And you sign. Um, so, you know, I've seen everything and any agent and uh, most talent have seen some wacky things on contracts. But this this all lifts, cuts, versions thing, keep an eye out for it, because if you see it, it's trouble is, again, there's really only one reason for it. They want to pay you, especially if it's a commercial, they want to pay you for one and they want to make as many as they want 
out of that one. So if we're experiencing uh, lower rates as it is, and now they're trying to make it a norm where we're not even paid per spot, that's going to be too much for a lot of folks. Uh, there's talent that are already going out of business. You know, there's talent that have been doing this for 30 years. They weathered like the last huge thing when everything went conversational and that knocked out a whole hell of a lot of guys, uh, you know, couldn't make the transition. That was a big tough one. Uh, and this is a whole lot more dangerous. Um, again, you know, there's agencies that are going out of business. There's tons of talent that are going out of business besides the um, incredible amount of talent who are losing their um, medical insurance. You know, they can't make their minimums for the union anymore. Uh, and that's happening to a lot, a lot of folks. And this, um, just seeing this, this ask spread uh, and seeing some other, we know kind of where it came from. And then you would see other folks start aping that and mimicking that and using that verbiage. It's too much. Um, you know, talent are not going to be able to survive if that's the, if that's the norm, that we're going to cut the rate uh, and pay you a tenth of what we used to. And now also we can use the audio in as many spots as we want. Uh, it's going to be more people, I mean, just out of business. It's, uh, it's, it's too much. Yeah. It's too much. I mean, th there's gotta be, I mean, these producers are, are they thinking that, you know, these people have to make a living or is it just simply bottom line? And are they being deceptive in doing that? I think that ask specifically is deceptive. Um, Cause again, there's really no other reason to ask for that. Uh, but, you know, things are tough all over. It's, it's tough in the, uh, the producers and the ad agencies. They're having some of the same problems that we are. Uh, you know, there's too many folks out there. There's, you know, some of these kitchen table uh, agencies are doing really well. And they're not enjoying, uh, you know, kind of back in the day, if you did a campaign and you did a good job, uh, there was some loyalty there. And the folks would stick with you. And now it's that's not happening as much. The employees are jumping around a lot. Uh, the creatives are jumping around a lot, or the creatives are working for a couple of different folks, or they're outsourcing, or they're doing the opposite, and they're bringing everything in. Um, but the end result is they're all kind of battling to see who can. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, show the best creative, but the lowest numbers and voiceover talent have, have paid the price for that because they realize, you know, listen, we could bring this rate down and down and down and down. Uh, and then, you know, we'll get the job. So it's, you know, as a vendor, um, our rate has gone down and it's gone down to the point that we would accept it. You know, obviously if they said, you know, well, we're going to go to, to this magic number. And then everybody said, Nope, uh, they would stop. But sadly, uh, talent, even, you know, of a high caliber and, and, uh, horrifyingly, uh, agents themselves, you know, would just accept this and they would accept lower and they would accept lower. And, um, you know, myself and other Alliance agents said, Hey guy, you have to stop at some point because the only, you know, we're going to wind up at the basement or you do it for free. Um, and then I've been on YouTube before saying, you know, this is uh, crazy. And you get guys commenting, I do it for free. No crap, man. That's what we were saying, you know? Um, Absolutely. So yeah, you know, it's a problem. It is. Well, it's not a problem. But I want to say, you know, all the producers are bad and the ad agencies are bad. I mean, these are my clients. I love these guys. Um, but, you know, you just, you got to be careful, man, because it's, you know, everybody's, you got to eat too, you know? Absolutely. Well, if you're wondering, we're talking with Eric Shepard here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Again, if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room right now. Uh, we've got a few questions for him coming up in the next segment. You're doing okay so far. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Okay, good. Do we get you anything? You need a drink, <laughs> some coffee. <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Facts are right over. That's right. All right, we're going to take a little break. We'll be right back with Eric Shepard right after these messages. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. 
It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hey, if the words accent and dialect make you nervous or not even want to audition for a job, listen to what David H. Lawrence has to say. Right, so I've taught thousands of people how to be successful at voiceover. And before I start teaching them, I always ask them, what is it about voiceover that makes you frightened or keeps you up at night or stops you from doing it? What are your concerns about voiceover? And more often than not, what I hear is accents and dialects. I'm not good at them. I don't know how to do them. I don't know how to build one from scratch. I don't know whether what I'm doing is good enough for professional VO work. I get it. I absolutely get it. And I've, I don't teach accents and dialects. Um, and I've never found a class that I could recommend to people that was really fantastic until now. When I saw Jim Johnson teach a sample lesson from the accents class, which he and Dan O'Day have put together, I, I was just blown away. Amazing. It's, a, it's creating a toolkit that lets you build any accent you want from scratch. And they're great. Like, I, I do pretty well with accents and dialects. I'm going to take this class. I'm not just going to recommend it. I'm going to be in the class as a student, right? And I'm not getting it for free. I got a pony up just like everybody else. You want to take the class with me? I'd love to have you. And I've arranged for a discount if you act fast. So go to the URL you see on the screen, vo2gogo.com slash accents. And register for the class. Do so before Tuesday night. You'll get the $300 discount if you mention my name in the comments box on step three. So when you get to step three, there's a comments box. Just say, hey, I love David. I want to take the class with David. I want to sit next to David in the class. Whatever. Mention my name. You get a $300 discount if you act before Tuesday night. And I'll be right there in the class with you. I can't wait to see you succeed at Accents and Dialects. VO2Gogo.com slash accents. And I'll see you in class. Once again, you can take the class with David for $300 off. Go to vo2gogo.com forward slash accents and drop his name in the comments. Are you a voice actor? Well, you should probably check out this tool from Source Elements called Source Connect. That's right. If you don't have it yet, you ought to go get it. And you don't have to buy it right away. You can just go get a demo. You can go over to source-elements.com. Get a 15-day free trial of this software and get familiar with what this thing does. What does it do? Connects your studio to other studios around the world for live direction, live recording. And this is the way a lot of the top tier work in the voiceover business is being recorded. So one way you can show that you're a pro voice actor, whether you've got a couple years in, 10 or more, is to have Source Connect on your website have working knowledge of how it works, and better yet, actually have it. So you should definitely have that in, in your toolbox. You can go get that demo, get it up and running. You don't have to have an iLock USB key. Just have the account set up on iLock and get it rocking. Go over to source-elements.com and sign up right now and tell them we sent you. This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.TV, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. We're a complete package. We try to make sure okay. we, we try to make sure people are interested the entire show, but like having great guests like you helps a lot. We're with the, <laughs> Eric Shepard from the Shepard Agency. He is a voiceover agent and talent. Do you do much work still, or are you just really concentrating on being an agent? Nah. You know what it was? Hmm. Man... That the freaking agent thing was like that was that's what killed me, is because they get like we just, amazed like right in the beginning it just like exploded and we started doing great because I knew all these great talent you know, uh so it was and then it was like ah oh, I didn't audition for that thing I did but in the back of my head I was thinking oh well you know now it's like a real agency there'll be more auditions so I'll audition more and whatever, but then like you like my guys are better than me so that I'd hear their stuff come in and I was like ah oh, forget it like I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> and then you just don't have time, you know? I mean, I work like no joke, man. I'll start 6 a.m. usually. And I mean, I turn off the laptop when I go to bed, which is like sadly freaking really early. But um, I, I remember the kids I told you about. Uh, <laughs> and they knock you right out. Man. But yeah, you know, I'm pretty much 
all day and a little bit of Saturdays, you know, all night uh, working. So if it's like, oh, can you hop in the booth? Like, no. Nah. So I have some legacy clients, um, a lot of telephony stuff that I've been doing for whatever. And they just freaking throw money at you when you've been doing it for like 20 years. Because yeah. if they replace you, like they, you know, they're still using stuff that they recorded, you know, like forget it, you know, like back in freaking Clinton administration or whatever. Right. Um, so it's like, you know, they don't want to start from scratch. So they keep you around. So, uh, you know, I go into the booth maybe, uh, you know, twice a week or so, but otherwise it's, yeah, I got a company to run. So, yeah, but you, you do do, you, you at least are still on screen now. You've got your, your YouTube series, the outspoken, and you got a new season of that coming up. And what do you cover in that aside from just whatever is yeah. on your mind. Well, I stopped, you know, cause I was doing it. And I, like we were talking before, like it sucked, man. You'd have to, you know, you make these videos. Like I said, I'll answer your questions for free. And I was trying to do like a good deed, you know, for the uh, community. That was really the whole thing. You know, I said, oh, I want to help people out and they don't have to pay like some coach a million bucks for them to tell them about you know, whatever, like whatever's on their mind, you know, just ask me kind of like how you guys are doing, you know, people have questions and you answer them. So uh, I said, well, this, you know, this would be a thing. But then you got to, you know, you record the video and you had to edit it. And again, like I'm running a business, you know, it's freaking crazy. You know, it takes a lot of time to put all that stuff together. And then you put it out there and you just get like five jerk offs coming back. Like you suck, man, or whatever. And you're like, really? <laughs> Sounds like YouTube. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like never read the comments, you know, and they're like, you say, oh, I'm too much. So I'm like, oh, I'm up yours, man. <laughs> so it's, you know, you get like, whatever. So I was like, forget it. Like I'm taking a break for a while, you know? And, uh, no, this is like what other people are like, dude, you're like lazy. Like, what do you want a refund? <laughs> Get out of here, man. Well, you know, they added this yeah. love button. There's like a like thing where you as the producer of the YouTube video can like or love, you know, heart someone's comment. Yeah. yeah. When are right. they going to put the next, the other one next to it? That's like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can just it's just like, dude. You can't middle finger. imagine, man. We like not a ton of people would comment, but every once in a while, people would come in and just, I mean, eviscerate me. This is one guy was like, "You creepy old homo." <laughs> what? That's the <laughs> opener, man. Like, and then just like this. Ah, he hey, got my attention like, with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was like, well, "I started voicing every last year. You don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. Whatever. Like, I've been doing this since you were in diapers, man. Whatever. Oh, so, God. anyways, yeah, I know. I was like, crazy. So I was like, "Screw you guys, man. I'm not doing it anymore." You know, and uh, so I quit for a while. But then I was like, "You, like, you guys are free. You know what's going oh, on. Man. You just do it live. You know." So I said, that'll be fun. And I'll just talk to like my friends, you know, we'll just kind of chat uh, like we're doing and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then like, I don't have to do any, like I'm, when I'm done, I hit the button and like go eat, you know, like that's it. <laughs> it's Miller time, you know? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So that was the thing. So we just started, I just had, uh, I've only done one so far. This like season two, which is all nonsense, but I was like, I got to call it something. Cause I was gone for like seven months, like brooding and being like, I don't like you anymore. Uh, so we did, <laughs> I did a live thing with uh, DC Douglas. He was uh, oh, cool. my uh, guinea pig. Um, and I said, well, let's see if this goes well and I'll do some more. And it was good. It was fun, man. You know, I liked it. We chatted for like an hour or so. Um, so there's going to be a bunch more. Next is uh, Dave Fenoy. Huh? Uh, I'll be up uh, probably next week or something. You'll check it. But um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, outspoken stuff, man. It's, uh, you know, no hold barred, blah, blah, blah. Not he, unlike. He could have us on. Where I'm at. You know, we got stuff to say. Yeah, we'd be happy to yeah. blab about yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially you know, this on is your thing, like the second, at least the second time I've done your thing. So I got to return the favor. Third, Third time. Yeah. So if you guys have like an actual real show, and then I'll return the favor and have yeah. you on like my podunk yeah. nonsense. <laughs> yes. I don't Mr. even have a green screen, man. I can't put you in all kinds of cool. <laughs> uh, we <things> tried. <laughs> George, I believe we have questions from oh, our man. vast studio they are, audience. They're being racked up. Virtual studio. Yeah, we have to do a lightning round to get yeah. through all these. But let's see. We'll start at the Bing. top. Tim Kelly. He's in the Facebook chat, and he's actually in Dublin, Ireland, and he's a voice actor. He's been in national radio and voiceover for 25 years, and his question is because he's Irish. I don't get many pay-to-play gigs for UK scripts for obvious reasons. Wrong accent, I guess. Should I try U.S. markets, or should I change my accent? <laughs> Great show, he says. Man, no joke. People have, you know. Um, we've got some folks that are you know, do American, and people, you know, this actually happened. It was... I don't, not what? even two weeks ago. I, I wasn't sure if he meant change 
accents to get British bookings? Or does he mean be an Irish voice for the American market? Well, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. You know, some folks will try to hide their accent. But that's a lot of work, man. Yes. You know? Yeah. Very um, hard. And Very some people hard. do it. It's amazing. You know, they don't realize that this guy is actually Australian. I thought he was American. He sounds yeah. exactly, you know. Uh, and then every, every American thinks they could do British. And 99% of them is just awful, like horrible. Yeah. Like, oh, I get me. Dick, like, oh, fucking I'm... Dick Van Dyke stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. The worst it's, oh, yeah, Cockney geez. accent of Sorry, all yeah. time. Everybody God. thinks they could do Southern, too. Yeah, and then Dick it just always comes out like, hot, like hey, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but that's work, man. Americans are suckers for accents, I think. Um, oh, yeah. But it's got to be for the right project, you know. Yeah. Um, I always tell the accented folks and they go, well, they didn't ask specifically for, you know, British or whatever, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is that they do. Try it, man. They might like it. You know, Americans love British stuff and Irish men. They love that. You know, they might hear a thing. And go, hey, wait a second. I didn't think of it. But, the, you know, this sounds great. It's not like you're speaking another language. Right. Um, but it is going to be tougher. You know, I mean, a lot of times they want the guy next door and the guy next door isn't always from freaking Dublin. So, uh, you know, you can't expect to be booking all the time. The best thing I think you could do in the American market, if you're a foreign, uh, foreign accented talent is be freaking great, man. And then you're the go-to, you know, <laughs> I, think that makes I mean, more like if you're else. looking for like a freaking Dutch guy, like where are you going to go? You know, <laughs> That's like true. everyone's going to go to freaking strict word because yeah, you had, like, you had to say that. Yeah. Well, because he's the, you know, not that there's not other great ones, but you become like the go-to, you know. He did his branding um, work. That's he why. Did. He did. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and he, but he's also great. So, I mean, and yeah, of great. course, everybody's back it up. Be great. But be, you know, be that guy, you know, if you be, I am the Spanish female, you know, and be the go-to um, is the best you could do. Absolutely. Question from Raul. Well, uh, this one's very vague, and you don't need to spend a lot of time on this because we got a lot more questions. But he says, "Oh, right. I forgot about the lightning part." Can you talk about <laughs> VO scams, please? So I, I don't know what more specific than that. I don't know how to look out for them or how to not get scammed by a predatory agent. I don't know what he's asking. Yeah, well, predatory agents are uh, probably going to be tough. Uh, but, you know, we have to vet clients all the time. So, uh, you know, even just a preliminary Google search yeah. uh, is going to help you. You know, don't just voice for people. I mean, they're not going to pay you up front. You know, if they're real sketchy or overseas, overseas are kind of tough, too, because if things go south, it's very difficult to uh, to sue because, you know, if they're in yeah. freaking Mumbai or something. Yeah. Uh, but definitely check out the client, you know, um, if it seems, you know, eh, this is kind of fishy. I mean, you should check out every client anyway. But if something seems fishy, yeah, you know, don't do it or, you know, ask for all the money up front. If they run, then, hey, it's better than getting scammed, you know? Yeah. yeah. Steve yep. Kingman, uh, he has a question. He's from Kingman. Oh, Steve from Kingman. Maybe he used to be, maybe his name should be Kingman. Maybe, maybe he'll change Steve it. Steve from Kingman <laughs> says, like can it. Eric <laughs> give us a few tips as to warning signs or positive signs when contacting an agent or agency from a voice talent perspective to try and determine if you're dealing with a legit agent or agency? I guess that dovetails off of what I just said. But how do you find legit agents? I guess is what he's saying. Uh, um, ask your friends. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's not like a million agencies out there. So, right. you know, you do a little bit of research. Obviously, if they're part of the alliance, they're going to be, uh, you That's know, a good on place the to start. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pick you know, it VOA. used to be back in the day, we used to tell people go to uh, Voice Bank. And if they were on Voice Bank, then, you know, you knew that they were the real deal. Right. Um, you know, I guess not the hub, if they're listed there, they're going to be, uh, you know, obviously a working agency. Right. Um, one, maybe kind of red flag. There are some smaller regional agencies um, that you could just by doing a little bit of research, you could tell that 99% of what they do is like modeling. And then they brought somebody on, you know, and oh, let's try out this voiceover thing. And they don't have somebody there full time or whatever. Um, so that's definitely a red flag. If they want all kinds of money up front, it's like, oh, well, we're going to put you on the website. But it costs 300 bucks a year or whatever, Keep run. Um, but otherwise, you know, just a little bit. Beep, 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 you know, Googling, you're going to know if they're, you know, the real deal or not. All righty. I would hope. Yeah. 
Uh, Lynn has an interesting question. Uh, how much of the jobs that you that you were working as an agent for are union versus non-union? Sadly, man, a lot less union than there used to be. Um, you know, that's, you know, another big part of the problem. Uh, a lot of clients don't want to go union and then they started going non-union and some of the bigger projects started going non-union. And then we saw this drop in rates in non-union. And then that had more people, go, you know, is this kind of uh, avalanche effect where you had folks saying, ah, well, I don't know if we want to do this as a union project. And that, wait a sec, we could pay what's <laughs> over talent, what? And they'll do it. Um, and we know projects where uh, the entire project would go non-union, you know, all the on-camera actors and everything just to take advantage of the bargain basement voiceover rates. Um, so sadly, it's a lot less union than it used to be, yep. which is really a shame. Yeah. Sonny James. Now, even though there are more people in this business, what advice can you give to newbies who have received reputable training and are looking to be successful. Yeah, and, and I guess that, that sort of dovetails to the question, when do you try to find an agent, and is that the way you find an agent? You know, it's like, you know, do you start sending demos out, or is it really more a matter of when you see somebody you know is good, you're going to find them, I would imagine. Uh, I've done that before. It, apparently, that's like not the way it's done because they were like, wait, what? Like, what kind of rinky dink? <laughs> like, are you just begging talent? And I'd be like, no, I saw you last night on a show and I thought, like, I thought you sounded great, man. And we want to uh, rep you. Um, you know, as far if the question is like, when do you, you know, submit? Not when you're new. Um, you know, I'm never going to take anybody. We have a rep folks that are like, have their own little stables of folks or their coaches or whatever. And they always say, Oh, you got to check out this guy. And he's great and whatever. And it's like, man, he's new. Like I'm not looking to stock the pond. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. It doesn't matter how great the talent is, how great they sound. If they're green, I've got clients I've been working with for 20 years. I'm not going to send them somebody who doesn't know how to take direction because they just got here. No, it's not necessarily their fault. Um, but I, like, I ain't got no time for that. Like, I just, I don't, I don't have to, you know, if I'm going to send somebody in on a session, I don't have to worry that, oh my God, are they going to screw it up? Are they going to know what they're doing? Or are they going to hear some term and they don't know what it is because they're green? Um, so, you know, I'm not taking on newbies. That's for sure. Some other agencies might, again, they might be stocking the pond. Sometimes you hear somebody and you go, man, they are freaking great. And if I don't jump on them, somebody else is going to jump on them uh, and get them. But, um, you know, if you're just starting out, now is not the time for an agent. That's not going to help you. It's you got to pound the pavement and get your own clients for a while. Absolutely. And then once you start, you have a great. You say, man, I've done A, B, C through Z, then call me. Right. And I'm making so much money, which is probably the most important part. You're, you're, you're not hey, going to want somebody man, you're not going to you know, make money I, with them. It sucks to bring somebody on. It's a lot of work. Yeah. You know, I got to make sure it's worth my while. You know, you got to make me an, a, a dime in this, you know, Um if you're not a proven earner, then, you know, why are we entering into a business relationship? True, true. JDK, man of many children, uh, he says, after hearing Eric's opinions about the industry, a lot of talent are going to be interested in having you represent them. Mm, great. Uh, is there a possibility, and he's very diplomatic here, uh, mm -hmm. is there a possibility he'll be expanding his roster anytime soon? And how would he be preferred to be approached? From behind, no, uh, <laughs> Don't through, <go> there. <laughs> not at all, through Lindsay. Uh, go, if you go to uh, shepherd.agency, her email address is there. I think it's just Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y at shepherd.agency uh, and send her a link to your website. Uh, again, you know, we don't pick up all the time, but we're always listening. Here's a little insider tip, like agents are always listening. And then when they go, we're not picking up now. They probably aren't picking up, maybe. But then that also means like they're not picking you up because, <laughs> because right. everyone's listening. But, it, you know, it depends on the time, too. We did a big, geez, oh, man, it's like coming up on a year now. But fine, I was like, we haven't picked up new people in a while. And you don't want to send, you know, kind of the same talent out forever. So I said, I got to pick up a bunch of folks. So I did. We were responding to emails that folks had sent us like three years previously. Um and we we're like, reply, like, are you still working? Are you still alive? We might want to have a conversation. So 
Uh, it takes a while, you know, don't expect like they're going to get back to you that listen, if you submit to an agent and they get back to you like five minutes later, uh, either, you know, you're just uh, amazing and they knew of your work or like, that's not an agency you want to be with. Cause they're not busy, you know, yeah. um, takes a while. Kim Fuller asks, has there been any indication that the current trend for decreasing rates and unlimited lifts, et cetera, in the commercial world is being felt at all in the promo narration world? Um, or to put it in a more succinct way, is this affecting VO in all genres or mostly commercial? Uh, commercial work has probably been hit hardest. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty much across the board. Uh, real top tier promo stuff, I think, is pretty much stuck um, just because of the relationships that they've had. You know, there's not like there's a plethora of buyers that are buying that stuff. Uh, there's also not a plethora of talent out there. You know, there's not like 400 million people that are all vying to do the next Hollywood trailer. You know, it's a smaller uh, pool. But, you know, of course, it's, you know, it's spreading. It's spreading everywhere. So, um, you know, once it's once buyers get used to just paying nothing for talent, it's a lot easier to go this way than it is to go back that way. So even when you're trying to just say, you know, we got to put on the brakes where we are, uh, that's very difficult. Yeah. Because what you're asking people to do, it doesn't seem difficult. It seems really easy. And this is what the, the Alliance members were saying, uh, even in the beginning was like, hey, man, this is crazy. We got to just, again, put on the brakes for a second um, because we got to, we got to stop this trend and you, you get almost vitriol back at agents and talent. Like, don't tell me to say no, no, don't tell me to turn down work. Um, and so I've learned, and you know, from my standpoint, you're thinking like, well, you idiot, there's not going to be any work left. You're not going to be able to make a living doing this uh, if you continue to take this stuff. But after doing, you know, being in, this uh, kind of capacity and, uh, you know, trying to be a spokesperson as, as one of the Alliance members for so long, we, you know, I think we all kind of learned it, you know, it is tough. There is going to be pushback because it is difficult to tell people to turn down work or difficult even uh, for folks to speak up a little bit and to say, you know, those, I agree to this term, but not to that term. It's very, very difficult for some people to do, uh, which is, you know, they should rely on their agents to do that. But if they're not repped, um, and then again, there's some folks that just don't care, man. Again, this is beer money. You know, they're not uh, full-time professional talent. So, you know, 50 bucks is like found money and they have some fun and they do it and that's that. Now, are these guys any good? No. But, um, you know, again, it's reinforcing that idea that um, professional actors aren't worth being paid. And that's, that's not good if you're in the business of professional acting. <laughs> yep. No, no question about it. Well, Eric, as always, it's a pleasure to speak with you. We got to talk more on the phone more often. Haven't seen you in a long time, but uh, I know, man. I've been in my kid. You know, I had the baby a couple years ago. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere, man. And I was like, No, I'll go back out in the world. And I was like, Oh no, I'm tired. And my <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm gonna go for a walk. No, I think I'm gonna take a nap. You know, <laughs> and my I, shirt is covered in snot. So I'm. You know what? I'm staying in. Yeah, I know it well. Uh, well, that was before the baby, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't say where I witnessed that. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for being with us. Uh, if people want to get a hold of you, but not to send their demos, uh, where can they find you? Uh, on the corner, hustling. <laughs> uh, no, you can find, uh, again, shepherd.agency. There's no dot .com or any of that. Uh, you can find us. I'm at Eric, E-R-I-K, at shepherd.agency. Uh, and I'm on Facebook all the time. I'm not tweeting. I can't. Okay, I suck at tweeting, uh, but I'm on Facebook all the time. You can reach me there uh, or uh, on uh, YouTube, the outspoken, check out the outspoken. Uh, and you could submit questions there as well. If you have other questions for uh, me. All right. Well, thanks for being with us tonight and uh, no, sharing you. your, your bounds, unbounded amounts of knowledge in this particular field. Well, let's not get crazy. All right. <laughs> Eric Shepard, everybody. All right, George and I will be right back. From VoiceOver Essentials, here's the quote of the month. Terry, the sign is terrific. Thanks so much for the quick response. Greatly appreciated. It now adorns my home studio with pride. 
Thanks to you and one of my heroes, Harlan Hogan, for being there. And uh, again, thanks for so much for supporting VOBS. And they should have Harlan on more often, don't you think? Well, thanks. Brian Hammond, voiceover of Chemist Washington. So let's talk about our multicolored LED sign and the credit card size included remote. It tells the world you're actually gainfully employed and lets people nearby know to speak softly while you do your big shtick. Well, you can only get them over at voiceoveressentials.com. Voiceoveressentials.com. Go over there. The best way to get there is to just go to the bottom of our homepage, click on the picture of Harlan talking into his Portabooth Pro, and go there, look for the sign, the voiceover recording sign that will help you record with no background noise from your family and other folks. Thanks again, Harlan. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Hi, this is Bob Bergen. And the evil, the the porky pig. And you're evil, the evil, the loving, the evil, the evil, the evil, the voice over body shot box. All right. Well, what a fun show. You know. Yeah. It's this. This is why we do this show. It's really important that. Uh, we get the right people on here to talk to you and give you the information you need. Yeah, I mean, J Eric does not sugarcoat it. I no, mean, this he it's does not, not always. It, <laughs> we're not putting sugar on this. You know, this is this is a business, and we want you guys to know the realities of what it is. And it may not always be the most positive things you want to hear. We're not here to, you know. You're going to make it. We're just here to give you the straight information. So exactly. Eric's going to give that to you. That's why he, he was a great guest. Absolutely. Well, we'll run this all week. And then next week, Tech Talk number seven will be on. So you can geek out with us uh, next week. But uh, this interview with Eric will be on all, all week here at uh, yes. all the places where you get us. Who are our donors of the week? Donors of the week. We got a plethora of them. Um, A lot of these names I've read before, which is why you should subscribe, because your name will be read here all the time. Got it. Like Don Griffith, Martha (laughs) Kahn, Shanna, or Shauna, as I was instructed is the way to say her name, Pennington Baird, Joseph Valentinetti, uh, Stephanie Sutherland, Patty Gibbons, Amanda Fellows, and Tom Pinto. The Tom Pinto. All right. Very cool. All right. Hey, show us your booths. Yeah. These now this is not this is this is the hoax studio. Yeah, this is a obviously a, a very professional more of a studio. Studio. Yeah. Something that you don't necessarily <laughs> Hey. hey. <laughs> no, is this not the kind of thing most voice actors need to aspire to? But hey, you know, if you hey, got if you can afford 150 it, yeah. grand kicking around, you can build something like this. Yeah, and you'll be happy send, to do it. For send them. in your pictures. Make sure they're landscape, not and, not portrait. You know, make them sharp. They right. shouldn't be Instagram quality. They should be broadcast quality. Ooh, yeah. Did I say that word? You broadcast, said broadcast quality. They should be nice and sharp, and we'll we'll throw them up on the wall behind us. Just shoot it with your iPhone. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, just, just put it on a tripod. Yes. Uh, once again, if you want to work with George, you go to? GeorgeTheTech.com. And Dan is over at? 
homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm -hmm. Happy to help you out there. Uh, let's see. You want to be in our studio? We're on it live every other Monday night, so we won't be on next week. And if you ain't sure, just email us. Email us at theguysatvobs.tv. We'd like to have you here in the studio with us because it's fun to have a live audience. It, Makes it us, is. Gives us a little bit more energy, Just even though you know the coffee works pretty well, yeah, too. Yeah, tonight we had to substitute audience for coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it helped. It, it, it worked. Uh, all righty. Well, and if you want to be here, just write to us again at theguysatvobs.tv. Slash audience or subject yeah, matter put audience. Audience and subject that way. That's right. Don't miss All it. right. Well, we need to thank our sponsors who make mm -hmm. this show absolutely possible, like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra. Uh, let's see here. Source Elements, yep. VO to Go Go, uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. Well, we also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Uh, mm -hmm. Couldn't do it without that fine, fine foundation. Uh, also, uh, our producer, Catherine Curtin, for getting us great guests. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Merlino in the chat room tonight. Thanks, hey, Mike. Mike. Boy, you got all those questions in. That was fabulous. Yeah, thanks. Uh, our technical director, Mike's mom, Sue Merlino, boop, boop, boop. who does a great job making it happen like a real TV show. Wait, it is a real TV show. <laughs> it's just not on NBC. It's the or, future of TV. Right that's here. right. It, and we're living it now. Uh, and, of course, Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us uh, this week. We really appreciate you tuning in or clicking in or whatever it is you guys do out there. Uh, this business is, as George was saying, it's not easy. You, there's, there's a lot of hard things you need to learn. Technically, we're here to help. That's why we're here every week, and we want to show you the best of what goes on in the business and getting the best information out there. So tune in every week here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And uh, like we always say, if it sounds good... It is good. All right, we got that right. <laughs> Have yourselves a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Widow. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO. BDS. BDS.